Hello, I'm Anna Mackay and this video is part two of three on a section of videos called Arithmetic Sequences. Okay, so looking at this example here, find k given that 3k plus 1, k and negative 3 are consecutive terms of an arithmetic sequence. So they're next to each other. So as we've learnt that the difference between two consecutive terms must be the same. So the difference, let's write out something what we think is going to happen for that. So if we had k and we subtract off the term before 3k plus 1, in the next slide you'll see this um, all written out really neatly for you. So I'm just getting your thinking started. And that that will be equal to the next, the difference of the next two terms. So we have negative 3 here subtract off k. So let's see um, how we would solve that. So down here is what we've just written there. We had the k subtract the one before and then the negative 3 subtract k. Expanding your brackets, um, paying careful attention to this negative one here and then rearranging, solving for k, we collect like terms and we're left with k is equal to 2. Always go back and read the question and it asks you to find k. So k was equal to 2. All right, that's that example. Next one. Finding the general term Tn for an arithmetic sequence with these two terms. So we know the third term and the eighth term. But what is the general term for every term in the sequence? Okay, so remembering, um, again, uh, shortly in this video you'll see all the setting out written out exactly as you need to, but I want to get your thinking started. So we know that T3 is equal to 8 and that T8 is equal to negative 17. Now let's use the general form for a, well we have to, <laughs> for an arithmetic sequence. So we have um, Tn is equal to the first term adding on n take 1 times by the difference. So let's put this into context for our two terms here. So that we've got t the third term let's now use this formula here, that's 1, is equal to t1 plus n take 1. Now n here is 3 because we're on the third term. So our n take 1 is 3 take 1 is 2. So I actually don't really even need the brackets. See if I can erase that out. There we go. Um, and we'll, So what do we have? We're adding on um, 2 um, lots of the difference, which we don't know yet, but we know that that will be equal to 8. And the eighth term is equal to t1, so I'm using this again, and now looking at our n take 1. Because it's the eighth term, n take 1 will give us 7, so plus 7 lots of the difference, and that's equal to negative 17. So you might be able to see now, well, what do we have to solve for? We have two unknowns. Our that's, um, yes, two unknowns. One unknown is our T1, our first term, our initial term, and the second unknown is D. So you have to cast your mind back to solving for simultaneous equations with two unknowns. There are two there, so you have to start looking at the coefficients. Yes, you can use your graphics calculator. Um, for Casio's in the um, equations menu, simultaneous is one option. You could graph them. Um, but you might start looking at the coefficients here of these terms and subtracting them, that whole equation, the first equation from the second. Let me show you all of this written out nicely. So here we go. We got to this point here, um, looking at our two equations. And as I said here, um, trying to sub, um, cancel out one equation from the other. And we do that and we end up with d is negative 5. So the difference is negative 5 each time. And to solve for the other unknown, you would substitute that back into one of the equations to get our first term of 18. Don't stop there. My math teacher always taught me to go back and read the question. Just because you've got the two unknowns doesn't mean the question's finished. Go back and read what the question is asking you. You need to find the whole general term. So that means we must write our final answer out for Tn. So hence why we come back and we use the general formula and substitute in those two values that we've just found. 
and there's our general form. It's always handy to check it too by substituting um, your, the ones that you know in and see if it works. Cool. And one more here. Insert four numbers between 3 and 12 so that all six numbers are in arithmetic sequence. Again, we'll show you the setting out in a minute. Have a think what's going to happen here. So you, I would write something out like this. You've got 3 and 12. And there's going to be six numbers all up, so that must mean there must be four in the middle. How are we going to get from three to the next number to the next to the next? Well, we've got the number three plus some lot of the difference. The next one, three plus some more difference. Remember, it's consecutive, so we've got two lots of difference there. Three plus three lots of the difference, then three plus four lots of the difference, and this number 12 is the next term along, so that another way of thinking of that is 3 plus 5 lots of the difference. So you could actually start by writing out an equation there. 3 plus 5 lots of the difference is equal to 12. Ah, there you go, you can solve for D now. And we'll set that out neatly. So here we are. 3 plus 5D is equal to 12. Therefore the difference comes out to be 9 divided by 5, or 1.8. And... If we're interested, that means um, here are all the different terms. So adding on 1.8 each time. Or um, you could substitute it into each term and work it out that way. Okay, so the questions that relate to that video from 10B are questions 9 to 13. And the next video in this uh, series is Arithmetic Sequences Part 3 of 3. Thank you.